fail slide right back to the start. We get them an interview uh, right now. The last three years running, 100% of those candidates have been successful moving on to an airline and going into their training program. 100%? That's unheard of. That's, uh, that's absolutely unheard of. Uh, before that, uh, before that, the academies uh, in the past 10 years has been about 97 percent. Mm -hmm. But up in, up about three or four years ago, we started to see 100 percent success rate, and we we have to attribute that to the success of our bridge program. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as soon as a instructor has has met the requirements to go to the airline, they go into a a bridge training program that it has a classroom environment and a FTD environment. Uh, where they go in and they, they do, uh, you know, they, they go to class and learn about the systems on a, on a jet, uh, learn about the crew resource management skills. That, you know, they've all learned that throughout their training, but, mm -hmm. but we focus more on the airline cockpit crew at that point. And once they've gone through that part of it, they go into a, a device, an FTD, that's a, uh, a generic um, regional jet, and they, they study the procedures of the airline of their choice. So if someone wants to go to to Comair, then they study Comair's procedures. If they want to go to Chautauqua, they study Chautauqua's procedures. And that, that tends to work really well for us. So by the time they get ready to go to the airline of their choice, they've already, they already have a lot of knowledge about the airline, mm -hmm. their procedures, their operating rules, and, and regulations that, are, that bind them uh, through their op specs. And they have a, a really, uh, really solid understanding of, the, of what's required of them to pass through that course. And I think that, that has added to the success. And one of the, one of the leading issues that the airlines had prior to that was that they had a higher washout rate mm -hmm. and 50 percent of the of the people who went into that program would wash out of their programs and I think uh, still seeing that today with people from outside of Comair that, uh, that have low time and, and have not gone through a program like this so it's, it's been very helpful for us to maintain a successful record and, and the airlines uh, you know really appreciate the efforts that we put into it and that, that is our main goal you know we have two basic customers. We have the airlines mm -hmm. to supply pilots to, and we have the students who come to us and want to have this as a career. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. You made a significant investment in technolo technologically advanced aircraft, i.e. the Cirrus SR-20, um, about as up-to-date as it gets out there. Have you seen that as being a factor in the success of these programs? I think it's uh, it's ultimately Im important, and I think the you know the reality is without this type of technology, uh, future flight training won't work. I mean, we you know we look at look around the industry and we see what we have in place. We have a, a significant um, uh, number of, of flight training schools out there that we're including ourselves were using uh, old technology to train these pilots and moving into aircraft that have a glass cockpit made it a made it a challenge for them. By starting with a glass environment in the beginning, uh, using uh, simulation of, with level six devices that allow us to really emulate the real world mm -hmm. uh, ha has given us an edge that we didn't have before, and I think it's going to be primarily what, what does make the FITS program a success. Outstanding. And if you could, you have a whole new annex uh, named after uh, Gary Beck, who's been a pivotal figure in this uh, process. Actually, Aaron has interviewed him uh, a couple of months ago and found that to be an illuminating experience. But if you would talk about what this facility, this new facility, the Gary Beck facility, will allow you to do. Well, I think the, the primary part of it is the part we're standing in right here. We have an excellent maintenance uh, department here and they, they do an incredible job of keeping our fleet up. You know, we have over 90 percent um, uh, availability for aircraft here and I think for a flight school that's a that's an incredible achievement especially with the number of aircraft we have over 100 aircraft in our fleet currently I think over 130 aircraft in our fleet and with a number like that you know having a, having a 90 percent or above uh, availability 
right on the aircraft is, is critical. This facility is a state-of-the-art facility to allow us to continue to maintain that level of, uh, of availability or, or better than that. And uh, with the new aircraft, we, we just felt like that was an important piece. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Uh, the additional parts of the facility um, are the, the executive offices. You know, just a, you know, a better image for the academy, I think, is an important part of it. The, the, uh, the sim hall is a, uh, is a necessity. And we have level six devices that, are, that take up a huge amount of room, uh, you know, 25 by 25 rooms. So with, with, uh, with, the, with those devices, we had to have a new facility. And uh, we, I think we have seven bays for that to take place now. So that's, uh, that's a big significant factor. And then uh, our, our level four AATDs, our level three, I'm sorry, AATDs are, uh, are housed in there as well. And the level three AATDs, you know, again, allow a, a level of simulation above and beyond anything that we've used in the past, even at that level. So with the level three and the level six is being housed here, it's a, you know, turns it into a premier facility for training. And final question for those, and I know I'm going to get this by email, so I have to ask it. For those that are interested in a program like this, uh, what is the approximate length of the program from, uh, say, an ab initio start uh, all the way on through to the potential uh, right seat of today's jetliners? Well, the, uh, the footprint that we've established is what we would really refer to as, as a two-year footprint. Okay. It's been about a year as a student, from beginning as a private instrument student, moving on up into the CFI ranks. That would take you around a 12-calendar month period, possibly a little bit shorter for those who are really aggressive and really interested in, in uh, spending the time and effort to get there quickly. And then on the flight line as an instructor, it's really up to the instructor. We have instructors who... You know, we'll, we'll fly 100 hours a month, and we have those those who don't. But what we really we really see on average is about a year from student to instructor to, to move on. So about two years overall. Very good, and we thank you much for your time. Thank you. And so that's how they do it. That's how Delta Connection Academy takes some of the folks that really, really want to fill tomorrow's airliner cockpits and adapts them to the best in simulator technology with AeroSim, how they put them through tremendous classroom environments and put them in technologically advanced aircraft like a Cirrus SR-20. And two years down the line, God willing, they're in the right seat of tomorrow's jet airliners. It's an interesting concept and they're working hard to make it uh, possible for those who dream of three and then four stripes on the sleeve to make it happen for themselves. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.